Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up? Wow, come on, y'all. Can y'all say it backwards? Wow. Can y'all say it backwards with me? Wow. First of all, are you not excited that you made it for another day, baby? You are alive, another 9-11. First of all, let's give honor. Let's pay honor to the victims, the families, just the tragedy of 9-11. Uh, can we just give it just a moment, y'all? Just a moment of silence for 9-11. Where were you during 9-11? You know, what was going on in your life during 9-11? Uh, I could tell you, I remember uh, my mom. My mom lost her finger on 9-11, okay? Uh, let me tell you a quick story, you know. It, it's one of those things that you could just never forget. As a matter of fact, I'll show y'all. Look at this. See that? See her finger? This was fresh. See that? Her middle finger. Uh, I'll never forget on 9-11. On 9-11, my mom. Uh, my mom sold drugs at her house, right? And uh, my mom had a a vicious pit bull and um on 9 11 somebody came to get some drugs i don't know what they was coming to get but the pit bull went to attack the person i don't know what the person did but her pit bull went to attack the person and my mom was trying to prevent the attack and um her hand was in the door and they slammed the door and my mom's finger got cut off and so i wasn't in the space of so much being there for either my mom or 9 11 because i was just amazed at this whole thing that had happened um here it is you know hundreds of lives lost uh who would have ever thought that that could happen and and my mom loses her finger on the same day and so i just i just could never forget 9 11 for both reasons you know and so um i think it's a beautiful thing when you can step back and just remember where you were you know remember where you were and um just holistically you know uh, a lot of us need to remember where we were at many times of our lives because sometimes, you know, we get so far into our new lives that we don't take the time to be grateful for where we came from, what we experienced, what we've overcome. First of all, can y'all drop some hearts for yourself? Can y'all just drop a heart for your damn self? You know, a lot of things don't come with no trophies. They don't come with no awards. They don't come with no recognition. There's a lot of battles that many of you all have overcame by yourself. You feel me? Dressed up, makeup on, going to work, taking care of the husband, smiling, showing up, but but nobody gave you no trophy or no stripe, or you didn't get no edification or no recognition for the silent battles that you fought and you've overcome. So just shouts out to you, and, and I want you to do a thing for yourself. I want you to do that often. You know, often, 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 oftentimes you should wake up and celebrate yourself and remind yourself of how dope you are. You know. Remind yourself of where you came from and what you came through and what and what you overcame. Like you gotta do that for yourself. You you deserve that. And so I just wanna remind you of that, that you know, you have to celebrate yourself, you have to be proud of yourself, you have to honor yourself, you have to respect yourself, you have to salute yourself. And and the truth is, um, if you're not in that space of of truly desiring to do that, um, you got work to do. You got work to do. Because if, if, if you can't celebrate yourself for something, that means that you ain't doing nothing. And, and I know that y'all, you know, probably like, we don't come on this call for you, for you to beat us up. I think y'all come on this call for you to be woke. You know, wake up and win. Everything that I do represents the awakening. You know, wake up and win. Uh, as a matter of fact, literally, wake up. If you don't have a reason to celebrate yourself every single day, um... That's just a more, that's just an indication that, that you got work to do. And that's beautiful. That's beautiful because there's a lot of people uh, that never get to that state. They don't even realize that, that, that look at you, you know, look what you've done uh, with yourself. Look at what you created for your life. There's a lot of people that, 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 that are victimized throughout life. Everything, somebody else did it. Everything, it was somebody else's fault. And, but, but I think that it's a very special uh, unique, beautiful uh, human because uh, we're spiritual beings having a human experience but I think it's a very beautiful, special special human 
back and say, that was wrong. I shouldn't have did that. You know, um, that was wrong. I shouldn't have said that. That was wrong. I, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have paid for that. That's wrong. I shouldn't have charged that. That's wrong. I shouldn't have ate that. That's wrong. I ain't had no business wearing that. That's wrong. I ain't had no business talking to him. That's wrong. I ain't had no business talking to her. I think that you a real, 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 real special being. When you can say, man, I ain't had no damn business. And, and not only can you say that to yourself, but I think that you a very special being when you can say that to yourself, but then make changes. Hello, come on, drop drop a two if you're listening to me right now. I think you was a cold piece. I think you was a bad somebody. I think you real special. If you could look at yourself and say, I'm the root cause of that situation. Ain't nobody did nothing to me. It ain't that woman fault. It ain't that man fault. It ain't these kids fault. It's my fault because I knew better. As a matter of fact, I knew so better that I, as I was doing it, I knew I was wrong. Hello? Hello? I just want to know if, if I'm willing, if, if I'm the only one willing to be so mature, I'm willing to check myself like that. Am I the only one? Yeah. I'm willing to say I ain't had no business. Right? But the beautiful thing about me saying I ain't had no business is three things. Number one, number one, number one, really is four things. But number one, it shows the type of respect that I have for, for just myself. You know, there's a lot of people walking around out here that y'all don't know. I ain't got no respect. None. None. No respect, no integrity, no character, no honor. And, and, and I'm going to tell y'all something, you know. Uh, the reality is like a lot of y'all are those people and then you don't realize that you attract those very same people and, and deep down inside you know it but for some reason you decide to still go with it because you make it a little less uh, 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 an issue because you do it too. So, 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 so even though you know that that person is wrong, that situation is wrong, this relationship is wrong, everything is wrong about everything, you make it a little less bad because you do it too. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This is a conversation I had to have with myself this weekend. Or, or, but better yet, better yet, you did it too. You may not do it anymore, but you once did it, and, and now you've learned how to uh, not judge somebody else or understand the meaning or the reason behind what somebody else has done or is doing because you remember the time that you did it. However, let me tell you all something that we got to get to the point of learning. You got to be willing to take responsibility for yourself. But that's one of the reasons why we got to also be willing to open up our mouths and be vocal because there's a lot of people that don't realize that people are redoing and recreating the things that they learned and seen you do. Because everybody is watching. Listen to me, y'all. Let me tell you about life. I love life because life be life in. And I, 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 I hear people say that in a negative way. Life be life in and I love it. Life don't be life in, and I'm over here depressed, and I'm over here, you know, going crazy. Life be life in, and I appreciate it because I've learned that I'm never the victim. I'm always the hero. Always. I'm never the victim. I'm always learning from every situation. And, and the best thing that I could tell all of you is that we learn from experiences. So we got to start getting excited when we experience things that's not what we want. Uh, or we got to learn to start getting, getting excited when we see things that, that we know is not right. Because we now are supposed to operate on a very high level of integrity and say, I ain't doing that. I ain't going to be the one to do that. Because I've seen that. And I see what that looked like. And I don't like what that looked like. So I'm not going to be the one to do that. And I'm not going to criticize, ridicule, judge, or discuss that somebody else did it. I'm just going to not do it. Because I see what it looks like. I see what it feels like, and I see what it does, and I also see the long-term um, ramifications of what not living a very respect, integrity, characteristic, honorable life can do for you. 
And I don't want to live like that. I don't want to one day be up and the next day be down because I didn't learn to grow through what I went through. And so I don't know who needs to hear this, but we got to grow. We got to grow. We got to understand that we don't repeat unsuccessful actions. If something didn't work out or something didn't sit right with you or something wasn't cool or something was hurtful or something, you saw it like you can't do it again. And you got to decide that not only am I not going to do it again, I'm going to make sure I get louder with the new thing so the old thing could wash itself away. See, some of us don't realize that that the thing you did that was bad is louder than the thing that you're doing is good or the thing that you did that's good. So they can't see that. They can only see the bad thing that you did. So it's time to you. You are responsible for getting loud. You got to get loud with the good thing that you're doing. You got to get loud because you got to remember, they don't want to see the evolution. They don't want to see the transformation. They want you to stay the same. And, and, and they want you to stay the same, right? Because they talked about you to people. <laughs> there are people that don't want you to grow you sometimes don't want to grow because it, 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 with, with growth comes responsibility and some of you all don't want that and I understand because it's a lot of responsibility how you think I feel how you think I feel I'm, I'm four months, so I'm four months and um, five days post-op of my, um, my surgery. Come on, y'all, drop some hearts for me. Drop some hearts for me. I'm four months and four and five days, four months and I'm four months and five days post-op of my, um, my surgery, all right? Some of you all know that I had... Uh, I did butt shots back when I was, Manaya was, was like a couple of months, so I would say 23 years ago, and it was something that just was not good. I didn't like it. I didn't feel good. It affected me. It just, it was, it was just all kind of stuff. I ain't going to talk about that. It, that's not important, but here's the point. So I goes and I get it removed. I found the right doctor. Shout out to my new booty team, Tanya and Vanessa and um, Joanna and all of those amazing, Dr. Camacho, all of that. But how you think I feel when I hear them calling me a fitness enthusiast, you know, or a fitness influencer, and I can't even barely do a damn jumping jack? Ah! How do you think that feels? No, 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 no. How do you think that feels? And see, how do you think that feels? Being called something that you ain't no more. Mm, somebody need to write that down. How does that feel to you? See, it should feel bad, depending on what it is being said. So being called a fitness influencer but, but can't even do a jumper jack, I said, nah, I, I ain't like how that felt. See, not liking something should be a beautiful gift. It is. Come on, somebody. Not liking something is a beautiful gift because what, what I'm noticing with a lot of people is that what they don't like they keep doing because it's easy to just accept it as whatever. It doesn't take any work, but it takes a person that says, I have integrity. I'm not finna be and act like something I'm not. Like I never forget y'all. Some of y'all know me from being in network marketing. I've been in network marketing for 15 years. Okay. This is not something that, that I just do. Oh, let me let y'all see how I look, by the way. I'm, I'm, I'm on the 15 day challenge. Let me let y'all check me out. Let me let y'all check me out. I weigh 149 pounds. Hold on. Let me let y'all see in case y'all not catching it. I weigh 149 pounds, by the way. Right? I weigh 149 pounds. This is my new booty. See it? It moves. See? See it? Ah, I can do a jumping jack now. Oh, y'all see it? Okay. This is me. 149 pounds. I'm on a 15-day challenge. I feel like royalty. I feel good. You know, I'm, I'm staying away from, you know, a whole bunch of bull crap. I've been eating my my fruits and my watermelon off, you know, sprinkled on top of it. Um, I've been doing protein. I told y'all protein. I had I cheated this weekend. I probably would have been two pounds lighter. I'm not gonna lie, but I went to finger licking and it was so good, you know, me and my crew. But um, yeah, this is how I look now. And you know why this is important that I show you all this because I have integrity. Okay, I'm not gonna start a 15 day challenge and go get bigger. 
I'm not going to have people calling me a fitness influencer and get fat. I don't care if I had surgery. It's been four months and five days. How many more months am I going to make an excuse? Am I, am I back 100%? No. I'm not back 100%. But guess what? I'm proud as hell of myself because I'm getting up. I'm walking. I'm working out. Yesterday, I walked like four miles. I walked the route that I used to walk with my eyes closed. Yes, it was my third time taking that walk. Am I going to lie to you and tell you it was just hard? No, when I pulled, when I got to the front door, I was like, God, thank you. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of you all right now that don't know you got to use what you got or you're going to lose who you were or who you are. Look, I was outside trotting it. Look at me. Subliminally planting a message in people's minds. What do you want people to think? That's Look at me. I was dying. About. What am I trying to tell you? Mm-hmm. First of all, I'll tell you, get outside and walk. Get out how to move your body. Whatever you do, don't let yourself get to day three. Day three makes more weak. And I'm not talking about W-E-E-K. But that's seven days, right? Three days makes one week. W-E-A-K. See, the greatest transformation, the greatest revelation happened in three days. Jesus rose on the third day. Right? When God is working on creating transformation and change, it happens in a three-day time span. And so, I wasn't gonna let three days catch me not working out. Did I feel like it today on a Sunday? Isn't it as hot as hell outside? As a matter of fact, let's see what the temperature is right now in my city. It is, hold on, it is, baby, 88 degrees right now. It's hot, baby, Mm -hmm. but I'm hotter. So what am I saying? I don't know who needs to be reminded of this. But remember what you told yourself. Remember what you said you was going to do. See, let let me just give y'all a title real quick. And we're going to get through this call. And I'm going to do my working out. Because I got an 11.30 a.m. training I got to do. But we got to begin with the end in mind. We got to begin with the end in mind. Right? But we got to know that the middle is harder than getting to the end. The middle piece of whatever you want that you desire, what you're thinking of, is the hardest. I'll give you some great examples, right? So you want to go work out. The beginning is easy. I want to go work out. I'm putting on my clothes. You, 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 you got your clothes on. You're ready to go. That's the easy part. But now the middle is getting in the process of whatever that thing is that you want to do. What's up, y'all? Getting in the process of whatever. What's up, Natalie? What's up, Tammy? Getting in the process of whatever that thing is that you want to do. That's the hardest part of the whole game. And not only getting in the process of whatever that thing is that you want to do, but the hardest thing is staying in that process. You know, as I as I spoke on the stage this weekend with, with John C. Maxwell, and man, such an honor. I, I remember the days that I just would read John C. Maxwell books, and, and I saw me sharing the stage with him before. I have, because I see that we have a lot of similarities. I'm no John C. Maxwell. John C. Maxwell was a pastor for 30-some years. John C. Maxwell has written over 90 books. John C. Maxwell is the number one personal development uh, coach and mentor. If you don't need to know John C. Maxwell, shame on you. Everybody that's a businessman, a woman, or desires or aspires to be a businessman or businesswoman should know John C. Maxwell. But listen, the definition of as, as is used in comparison to refer to the extent or degree of something. Number two, the definition of as means used to indicate that something happens during the time when something is taking place. I got to repeat that one more time. As... The definition, the definition of as says, used to indicate that something is happening during the time when something is taking place. Come on, somebody. That means you got to get in the doing. So something is happening while you are doing what you're supposed to do. But see, if you quit or if you lay down or if you just a talker, see, let me tell y'all what I learned. Anybody can formulate words. Anybody can formulate words. Anybody can formulate words. As a matter of fact, think about how many times you, a man that told you he loved you, ladies, and how many times you done told a man you loved them. How? How? Ain't no way you love that many people and you don't think about them right now today. That's total and complete BS. So let's get past that. 
But life is happening as you are experiencing it, as you are doing it. So when you're going through betrayal, life is happening. That means something is taking place. So be grateful for the betrayal, man. Let me tell y'all something. I love it. And I, I, I want to break this down for you guys because it's going to help you. Because I, I, I'm 43 years old. It took me 43 years, years to get here. Drop some threes if y'all listen, because what I'm about to say is going to relieve a lot of you all right now of being mad at somebody or feeling betrayed or feeling used or feeling hurt. Like all them weak ass emotions, excuse me. Let me help you understand something. Are y'all ready? Give me a three if you track with me. This is what I'm about to tell y'all right now is about to change your whole life. Give me a three. I promise you it's going to change your life. I promise you. I, I ain't had no business drinking out of this cup. So now I'm drinking I'm that bitch juice. I ain't got no business drinking I'm that bitch juice. Shouts out to Yvette Mirtha who mailed me these. I need to sell these, y'all. This is just, you lay this on your cup and press it down, child. That's it. Guess what? Please listen to me. And when you get what I'm about to say, because some of y'all ain't going to get it. Drop an exclamation point when you get this. Drop a question mark if you don't understand it. And this doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. I just wanted you to know we all learn and understand things differently. So check this out. Drop an exclamation point if you get it. Drop a question mark if you don't. Y'all ready? When a person does something, right, that doesn't align with you, it doesn't align morally it doesn't align ethically and it's just plain not right right we know when things are just not right why do we get so upset don't get upset i want to see what you would rather do anyway that's my philosophy on life i am grateful that i am mature enough to accept the fact that you did it. And that's great. Thank you. I just wanted to see who you were anyway. Now, granted, depending on what that person is, who that person is, and what you all are supposed to be, it could be a misunderstanding. It could be we need to communicate. It could be we're from two different worlds. It could be we are getting to know each other. But if all of that is out the way, and a person does something that doesn't align, listen to me, y'all. Give yourself a break. Stop getting upset. I'm grateful. That's what you rather do? Thank you. I wish you would have did it long time ago. I hate that it took so long for me to see what you rather do. So I don't get upset. I count it all joy. Because I want to see who you are anyway. We're too grown and too old. I'm too old. I'm 43, y'all. I'll be 44 years old in February. I don't have time to be playing with people that's playing with themselves. Because at the end of the day, everything has a cause and an effect. We live in a land called the law of causation. Everything gives a cause and an effect. And so now, I, now it makes sense to me why this and this and this and this and this keeps happening to you. It's because you don't understand that everything is connected. Thank you, Butterfly God. I thank you for that message. And it's a yellow one. I shay. <laughs> you wonder why you can't make no money. You wonder why you can't get no man. You wonder why you don't have no friends. You wonder why you ain't got no peace in your mind. You wonder why you're tormented by things you do. Hello? Look how you talk to people. You think that ain't affecting everything else? Listen to me, y'all. Everything is connected. Everything is connected. We're all, think about it. It's not hard to understand. We're all, all of this is connected. You don't think what happened at my toe it's not affecting. Why you think when a person get a toe infection or gangrene, they got to cut the toe off to, a, to, to prevent it from affecting the whole body? Why you think when somebody gets some type of, you know, maybe a breast cancer and, and males, women have power? Come on, ladies. They want to cut off the breast to affect, to, to, to prevent it from moving throughout the whole body. So everything is connected. We got to understand that. Everything has its cause and, it, and its effect. So, so you may be the most loving everything, but talk about people behind their back. Yeah. 
You may be the greatest pastor, the greatest prophet. You could prophesy like nobody's business. You could you could pastor like nobody. You know them scriptures like ooh. You could sing. I'm down, baby. Hey birds, thank y'all. I thank y'all. Y'all like this too. Thank you for coming and going. I appreciate the another butterfly. Hey, yeah. So so you could be all of these things and wonder why you can't get no record deal. You so great. You so great. I don't know why. You know why. That's integrity. What are you doing when nobody is looking? Come on, somebody, Jill Sturge. And I'm only talking to y'all because y'all need to hear this because I needed to know this because I ain't playing around with me. Hello? Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Big time passive but treat people nasty. Come on, Brianna Bell. Big time passive but treat people nasty. Big time, big time, whatever. And treat people nasty. Big time whatever. And talk about people behind their back. Big time whatever. But stay judging somebody. Man, listen. We got to begin with the end in mind. And in the beginning, it's easy. When you start something, it's easy. But can you get to the end? Come on, uh, Kalia. I see you out there, girl, doing your thing. Salute. Girl, I love it. You and your crew. Girl, you be working out. I love it. So y'all, it ain't that complicated for us to, 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 to shift the things that, that need to be sifted away and for us to shift the things that need to be shifted. It's really just a decision. And it really is wrapped up in respect. Come on, Tammy Price. It really is wrapped up in respect, integrity, character, and honor. It really is. It really, really is. I didn't, I, and, and, I, and I, this is no pun intended for me and the rich girls and all that. I, I'm just telling y'all what I had to come to learn. That's how you see people make a lot of money and then they go broke. Like, I would never be broke another day in my life. Like, I want people to understand that. So people who don't, they don't want to spend money or like, like I remember hearing people say they, they quit the organization because they didn't want me to make money. Baby, it's nothing a human can do to stop the money that I'm going to make. It's nothing a human walking this earth could do to stop what the greatness of God is on my life and on your life. Some of y'all need to receive that for yourself. There's nothing a human could do to stop what God is going to do for you because you could be trusted. Some people just can't be trusted. We'll talk. Some people can't. And when I talk about never being broke another day in my life, I'm talking about holistically. Hello, somebody. First of all, I don't want to have a lot of money and don't like myself. Who want to do? I don't want to have a whole lot of money but don't like me. Do y'all know how many people have committed suicide? They got a whole lot of money. Come on, she does talk. They got a whole lot of money and no peace, no joy, no happiness. So so it's kind of like, yeah, you can have a lot of money, but what if the money becomes a curse? Who want to have a lot of money and no love? Everybody, you know everybody around you because you got some money. You know everybody around you because they want to use you. That's a messed up feeling. Straight up, that's a fucked up feeling with a capital P, if I could say the least. That's not a good feeling. None of y'all want that. So when I talk about never being broke, I'm talking about having love, having the great, great people around you, being able to know the difference. Like, hello, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I, I want to I wanna know the difference. Some of y'all don't know the reason why you had to get hurt or you had to get betrayed or you had to get used is because you have to know the difference from experience. Come on, drop a two if you hear what I'm saying. How are you going to know if somebody really love you until you experience somebody who didn't really love you? It's like, oh, I know what that looks like. How are you going to experience what or know the difference of what being used is like until you have gotten used? Hello, y'all supposed to get excited. You supposed to be like, yes, I know what this is. Get excited. But y'all ain't even ready. Drop a drop drop a nine, baby. If drop a drop a nine one one. If y'all really want me to give you the real game. The real truth. The real truth. How much drop a nine one one if y'all want this emergency? Hello, cause y'all supposed to break this when it's an emergency. I'm about to tell y'all what to break when it's an emergency. Come on, Lydia Mitchell. What's up? Good morning. Hello, Miss Teresa. I miss you. Hope we see DJ today. All right. All right. I'm finna get y'all. I'm finna get y'all an emergency to drop. And listen, let me tell y'all something. Listen, I'm on a 15-day challenge. I I just want y'all to know, like straight up, 
Y'all can say what y'all want to say about TLC, baby. But baby, baby, them prop, baby, I had fried food this weekend. I look good as hell. Today is four months and five days since that new booty. Y'all see it? Y'all see it? What y'all see? What you see when you look at me? Hey, I feel so good. I'm going to work out after this. Then I'm getting on Eric Warby's mastermind. Baby, I'm, I'm working. I'm committed to the works. Y'all ready? Let me give y'all a 911. Everybody is not your friend. Every person that comes into your life is not your friend. Every, every man that comes into your life is not your husband. Yeah. Every job you get, every business you start, it's not your assignment. Every person that come into your life with a problem, it's not your problem to solve. Everybody that come into your life that's mean and nasty and, and you just can't get rid of them because some people we just can't get rid of. Everything comes for a reason, a season, and very seldom comes for come, things come for a lifetime. Everybody that come in your life is not supposed to be your friend. Stop thinking everybody you're forever. Some people is supposed to just wake you up, teach you the lesson, and give you the experience. And don't get mad. Man, I, I mean, listen. There are people that came in my life that, quote, unquote, did things that were hurtful. But Tammy, man, LaQuell, man, if they didn't do these things, I would not have known the difference. Like, really, like, I, I'm talking about, like, I'm so happy you did that to me, girl. Because I ain't know that this could even be possible. I thought it was real. Now I know it could feel real. And don't be real. It's crazy. It ain't supposed to hurt. No, get out of that. If, if it, I wish somebody would have came and told me this a couple years ago. It was what it's supposed to be. I want y'all to write these very words down. You are right where you supposed to be. Come on, man. Like, like, like I, I get confused sometimes. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you hope and a bright future. And y'all believe that. But then when, when contrast come, that's not a part of it? Contrast is a part of it. Because contrast is a frequency that allows you to feel. You are feeling beings. We're supposed to feel. That's the beauty. We we supposed to feel. We supposed to know. We supposed to experience and 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 decompartmentalize it now. And now you know. Wait a minute. There is crazy people in the world. It's crazy people in the world, y'all. Yes. Yes, it is. That's why it's a word called crazy. Cause that that needed to be given to somebody. There's a word called users. That's why the word was created. Because we need to be able to know that they are in the world today. Users. There is something in the world called robbers. Robbers. R-O-B-B-E-R-S. That is a word used to describe something or someone that does what robbers do. So you have to be okay with experiencing all of these things that people are and decide that you ain't finna be one of them. All of that. Takers, liars, stealers, manipulators, narcissists, all of that. But I ain't, we, ain't finna, we, we ain't gotta name all of them. Y'all know it's a lot. Some of y'all are it too. I'd have been a lot of them. A lot. I done did a lot of that stuff, honey. So that's why I know what it is. And that's why I also know that some people don't know no better. That's why, you know, uh, I believe the reason why, you know, you know, Jesus was being crucified, what he was praying. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. There are some people that have done things. The reason why it bothers you so much is because you don't understand why would somebody do that. 
That's the only reason why it bothers you so much because you cannot rationalize it. You cannot uh, conceptualize it. You cannot understand it. So what makes it so bad, Kalia, is like, but why? So you're so busy in the why, when you should be saying, but okay. I'm not going to be saying why no more. I'm going to be saying okay and thank you because I need to know, man, but what the Bible says, we must know those that labor amongst you. We said that last Monday during Labor Day. Don't forget it. You must know those who labor amongst you. I love to see what you rather do. I love to see what you rather do. I want to see what you rather do, not, not what I convinced you to do, not what I told you to do, not what I had to remind you to do. Like, man, love me with your whole heart if you love me. Love me with your whole heart. If you'd rather not call me, no problem. I'm not going to call you either until it's time for me to call you for a particular reason. I'm not calling you because we friends. You've made that very clear. Right? Right? Hello? If somebody constantly is using you for money and they only call you when they want something, why would you continuously answer the phone? When the last time they called you just to say hi? How are you? If they always call you for a problem, then... I'm confused. Are you going to say something? Are you going to keep letting them call you when they got a problem? Or are you going to say, hey, do you ever have something good to talk about? Do you ever want to take me to dinner or lunch? Because I'm just asking. Because I don't want to assume anything. Is every day always bad? Because sometimes people need to be reminded. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. They don't realize it. And I'm not saying, let me tell y'all something. I'm sorry. When they say return energy, every time I see that, my heart cringes. I'm not returning no energy. I'm not returning no energy. Why would I return energy? What's that doing? That's lowering my vibrational frequency. Why would I return the energy that you're giving me that I don't want? Why would I return it? No, 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 no. Hello? Because everything is connected. Okay, I'm not going to return what I don't want so I can continue getting what I don't want. No, I'm going to call you. Hey, how you doing? What if, if I need to call you, if there's a reason, but, but just for no, no, I'm not returning nothing. I'm giving, if I'm talking to you, there's a reason why I'm talking to you. And I'm giving the total opposite of what you're giving because I want to teach you something. Hello? Can y'all say hello if y'all hear what I'm saying? I want you to learn. So why would I return when I want you to learn? Ooh, that sounds good. Hello? Come on, Pastor Cleavis. You can write that down. I know you be dropping. Why would I return when I want you to learn? Nah. So... I, I just, I just, you know, feeling real good on this beautiful Monday, um, 9-11. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on my 15-day challenge. I don't know what day I'm on. I just know it ends on the 21st or the 24th. I ain't stopping. I'm just, I'm just going with it. Um, I woke up this morning 149 pounds. Uh, I woke up feeling good. I woke up feeling fly. I woke up feeling sexy. Um, I'm about to work out. I don't even remember what I said. Text that to me, uh, Sheila. I forgot what I said. Why would I return when I want you to learn? Something like that. Write that down, please. Because I know Pastor Cleavage is going to do a sermon on it, and I need some of them tithes and offerings that she's going to collect on that, okay? But, um, but no, what you know, so so I just feel good. And, and I'm going to tell y'all something before I let y'all go. Let me tell y'all something before I let y'all go. Every day, work on, be, work on becoming the, the highest and best version of yourself. Like, every day. Like, every day. Nothing, nothing is is more important and nothing should be more valuable to you than you becoming i i, I gave you all the definition of ass right well, i gave you all the definition of ass used to indicate that something happens during the time when something is taking place something is taking place that means that as you are doing whatever it is you're doing you got to do it in faith life is happening as me you understand? So, so, so the reality is, thank y'all so much. The reality is that something has to be taking place. Please, I hope y'all get that. 
something has, thank you, Regina. Thank you, Sheila. Something has to be taking place and it can't be complaining. It can't be whining. It, 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 challenge is 9 21st. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Vanessa. It can't be making excuses because at the end of the day, if you have no self-respect, no integrity for yourself, then you're, you're, you're going to always wonder why people treat me the way they treat me. Why people act how they act with me. Why it's like everybody always listen to her, but they don't listen to me. Like why? Nobody believes you because you don't even believe you. So the goal is to, is to work every day on yourself to get in a flow that you could even be believable. Can I tell you? The goal is to continue walking and working and becoming so that you can believe you. And once you believe you, you ain't got to work that hard, baby. Because you believe you. So, for example, as I know that we're preparing for the awakening, you know, Vanessa, how many tickets we got left? I think we got 15 tickets left. I ain't going to hold you. I want to sell 50 more. I want to sell more than what the space holds because I want the room to be wall to wall, 10 feet tall. Hello, somebody. I want the room. I want people busting out the door. So we legally got 15 seats left. I believe Vanessa could comment. But I'm telling y'all right now, I'm ready to sell more than what we have to be able to hold because, hey, it, I know what the room going to do. And I want more happy, more energetic, more lively people in the world. And I know that the awakening is going to help to awaken something on the inside of you so you can go get your man. So you can start making some money. So you can stop having a, a funny attitude. So you can stop being overweight. So you can stop complaining. And then you can start spending some money and coming to, to my events. And you can become a part of the Girl Hold My Hand community. And you're going to start a new company. And I'm going to be able to buy whatever you're selling. So I, I love when people be awakened. Because when people be awakened, the world seems more alive. Now everybody want to lay down and go to sleep, complain, whine, be depressed, save money. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I want to take a trip. I want to go somewhere exotic. I wanna, I'm looking forward to girl hold my hand winning weekend. Y'all think we we going to Columbia? I don't want a bunch of broke ass people talking about they can't afford to go to Columbia. So now I gotta be promoting it. I, I want my people to get happy and awakened so that we can bring some vibration to the world. Listen, we are vibrational beings. You ever wonder how your cell phone work? That is energy. Your computer, energy. The water flowing, energy. All the wires are connected in your car and your car cranks, energy. One, one, one wrong wire detaches from your heart, energy, gone. Everything is connected. Please believe. And so I just want to remind you all today, like real talk, we, we got work to do. And at the end of the day, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. I'm not letting nothing stop me from getting to the highest and best version of myself. Why? Because I know what I said. I know what I told myself. I know what I told myself. And I have to live up to what I said. And I, and I got to feel good within my being. And I got to make me proud. And, and I got to remember that there, there's bios out there in the world where they call me a freaking fitness influencer. <laughs> I'm like, every time they say fitness influencer and I can't do a jumper jack, it's like making my stomach hurt. Like some of y'all don't know that the money that you used to make that you're no longer making, it bothers you when people talk about it because you're not doing it anymore. But instead of you, you know, transmuting that energy into something negative, why don't you transmute that energy into if I did it once, I could do it again type of energy. You understand? Instead of saying, man, yeah, when they start talking about how you used to make 30, 40,000 a month or 5, 10, 15,000 a month or whatever that number is that makes you cringe because you ain't making it no more. Instead of you allowing that to hurt you or destroy you, why don't every time they say it, you use it as an affirmation? Thank you for the $20, whoever sent me that cash out. Why don't you transmute that energy and, 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 and use it for good and, and remind yourself, I got you for your, uh, your, your seat as well, Kiana. Why don't you use that as fuel, right? As fuel. And remind yourself, whatever you once did, you could do it again. How you think I feel when my body feels stiff? I used to be a stripper. My butt is still stiff in certain spots, so I can't shake it like I used to. And I still could feel like the, 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 the sutures when they stitched it back up. But in my mind, I say, baby, don't worry about it. If I could shake it once, baby, I'm going to shake this thing again. And so every day during my workouts, trust me, I be working on the shake. 
and I'm feeling it getting loose, baby. I'm not going to, hey, uh, Pastor John Gray, y'all drop some fire for Pastor John Gray. I'm not going to tell myself, oh, I had surgery and it's only four months. And, and the doctor said it could take up to a year. And, and, and no, nah, I could choose that. And many of you all would say, yeah, coach, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll tell me that I'm right because this excuse is valid. The excuse is never meant to not be valid, y'all. That's why we use it. We know it's valid. And then we know it's a bunch of BS. You get what I'm saying? So we tell ourselves that and we let other people tell ourselves the bull crap. And then we stay in it. And then we, we really know deep down inside that we really just playing small and we really just making excuses. And guess who got to live with that self-disrespect? Guess who got to live with that self-disrespect? You. Who got to live with that no having integrity inside their soul because they know that they didn't even try? You think I want to get back to the strength and the stamina? I got your $25, Chanel. Thank you. You think I don't want to get back to the strength and the stamina that I had? Yes, I do. I don't want to be as skinny as I was, but there was a certain stamina that I had that I felt that I'm going to get back. And so when I put this 15-day challenge together, it wasn't... For, for, for reasons that y'all thought. It was fine. I ain't finna embarrass myself. I gotta speak I gotta speak on the stage for damn near two days to people that came to be awakened. I gotta go through a whole workbook, something I never have been able to get through because the questions be so deep. The process of what we go through at the awakening is so deep that I, I barely get it to the middle of the book. But this year, I got to go through the whole entire manual. You think I could afford to be out of breath and complain about my legs tight and my back hurt? Y'all don't want to hear that. I got you, Kimberly. Thank you for the $111.11. Hello, Kimberly. Thank you. You think you think I want to have y'all. Thank you for the $33, Tanya Crow. You think I'm going to have y'all come to the awakening and the whole time y'all feeling sorry for me because I ain't got no stamina? Because guess what? Y'all still, y'all won't complain. Y'all just feel sorry for me. You think I'm going to allow anybody to pity me? I don't want that energy in the atmosphere when it comes to Stormy. I want y'all to leave me saying, God damn, she don't play no games. That's a strong woman. Yes, indeed. And that's what y'all going to say. Because that's what this whole 15 days was about. Me getting myself together. Me getting my stamina back up. And I decided to put $1,750 on it. I'm giving away $1,750 to three winners just because y'all were my accountability partners and y'all went the whole way with me. Because I'm just, I'm preparing to be awakened. Okay? I'm preparing to close out this fourth quarter stronger. You understand me? I'm preparing. 2024, I can't th I can't speak for y'all. But I, I really just, just kind of, you know, did a little sign in 2023. Oh, but 2024, I got big plans for 2024. You understand? Proper plan to prevent a piss poor performance. I have big plans for 2024. I'm not retiring or tired or finished or bored. Everything that I do, I love. I'm stepping up. the. I mean, when I say I'm mashing the gas, I'm looking to attract the right people that could help me to get to the next level. There are things that I want to do. I've been talking about it, but I can't do it yet because I need a manager to manage those certain entities. But I got big plans for next year. And I'm not waiting till January get here for the big plans to start planning. No, I'm working on my mind, body, spirit, finances, and my, my relationships. I'm working on all of those things. Because they all are going to come together for me. And they're going to come together this year. So that next year, while everybody's trying to figure stuff out, I'm already in the game. Because it ain't too hard. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody really doing nothing. Everybody's just playing around. Everybody's scared. That's what y'all got to think. Anybody doing nothing, y'all? Y'all can't even name five people right now that's, that's doing something. I'm talking about really doing something. Like, like straight up, real talk. Like Beyonce is doing something. Beyonce got the whole world muting and wearing silver and, and going to her shows. and she, I'm, I'm looking at her, her schedule like, God damn it, man. But you think she became that person at the shows? Or you think she's been preparing herself for the whole year? So now it ain't nothing to her. Y'all got to understand what happens suddenly when you get in the flow, when you get in the grind, when you get in the move. Beyonce didn't get that stamina up at the concerts. Man, that lady be on the stage performing for three hours. She had to prepare herself every day. She could have said, I'm Beyonce. I just had these kids. Uh, she could have just did one city. Nah, she like, man, I'm outside. She doing something. 
very impressive. You understand? It, it, it ain't hard to do nothing and impress people right now because ain't nobody doing nothing. So we just got to decide we about to do something. We about to match the gas. We about to turn up. We about to be everywhere. We about to be working and marketing and, and showing up. Because it ain't hard to be seen right now. Because ain't nobody really doing a whole bunch. So I just want to remind you all right now, as you are entrepreneurs and you are in the marketplace, listen, don't move at the pace of what you see everybody doing. Nah. Don't move at the pace of what everybody else doing and think you're doing something because you're doing just a little bit more than everybody else. Nah, that's not smart. Like, I'm, I got plans. I'm looking to align with somebody that can run my digital, different digital businesses I'm about to do. I'm looking, I, I don't want to run it by myself. That's the problem. I love to pay people. You understand? I want to, you know, do a couple of things I can't tell y'all about. I'm just, I, I got my eyes and ears open. When I go to these events, I'm not looking. Vanessa be like, you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I want to talk to her. I want to know who she is and what she could do for me. I want to know who he is. I want to collaborate correctly. Not with people that need me to pay them for something. I'm talking about people that they got some value. I got some value. What's up, him 500? We come together and we bring value to the marketplace. That's what I'm looking to do. I'm looking to collaborate with people that can introduce my audience to a new way. I can introduce their audience to a new way. We both have something of value. And as we come together, we make our audiences even better. I'm excited about my collaboration with R.C. Blakes. I'm excited about my collaboration with Coach Ken. These are people that you would never expect me to collaborate with. I'm excited about my collaboration with Ray Hayden. You understand? I'm excited today about my collaboration with uh, Eric Worre. I'm going to add so much value that people are going to come looking for me. You heard Vanessa this morning. We couldn't even get out of the room when I left that stage. I spoke for 30, 34 minutes on Saturday. And it was a line. I had to have talked to at least 200 people. It was a crowd of people inside the room. Why? Because I was in a room with a new audience. It's like, who are you? Where you come from? I need more. I was like, man, I wish Sheila was there. I know we would have sold out the awakening that weekend. I'm telling you we would have. That people wanted more. Right? So when you are in an opportunity to add value to people, y'all, add value so that they could want more. Don't play slow or play small or dim your light. Turn up, man. Turn up. Turn up. I'm excited about new audiences. And, and uh, I did the podcast a couple of weeks ago. Uh, with, with, uh, with, 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 I forgot this man's name. Um, 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 I forgot his name, but just getting it to new audiences, getting it to new audiences. Y'all got to understand, stop just talking to the same type of people or your same people. That's too easy. Get a little uncomfortable. And I'm gonna leave y'all with this. Collaborate with three people this week. Find three new people that can add value. And I'm sorry to say this. Please don't get offended. Don't collaborate with a bunch of broke people. Because if they broke, that means their audience broke. They audience ain't going to spend no money. Go collaborate with somebody. Bring some value to somebody else that's doing something. When I say broke, I'm talking about if they got a, a, a damsel in distress story. Anybody got time for that? Because that means everybody around them has a damsel in distress story. So find ways that you can add value and, and make some noise. And remember, this is what I'm going to leave y'all with. The end is always hard to get to. The beginning is always easier than getting to the end. Because the middle is hard. It ain't easy. I told a group this weekend, you as a businessman or woman, I'm sorry to tell you, you're going to work till you die. And it's a different kind of work. It's love. It's hard work. Like, I don't get paid for doing these lives. Nobody don't pay me. If I don't come on here, what's going to happen? I ain't going to lose my job. I do this because it reminds me of who I am. And it allows me to pour into people. And there are people that's in my business. They get up these calls and be, be excited. So this is a part of what I do to keep people in very high vibration. So I don't just get on here to teach, do this and do that and do this. Because there's a lot of how to do's out here in the world. Right? Is a lot of do it this and follow these five steps. And that's very important. And don't get it twisted. The how-to specifically is very important. But also what's probably even more important than the how-tos is the I will. It's the heart. It's the love. It's the excitement. Because when you are excited about something, I promise you, you'll figure out how to get it done. But it's not, it ain't, and it ain't the opposite. It ain't how to get it done, then, then the excitement. No, it's the, let me get excited. And once you get excited, how to get it done will find you. Trust me when I tell you. 
And there's a lot of non-excited people in the world that's showing up. But they are not showing up with the stamina and the energy needed to get you to that next phase in life. And that's why it's important that you do whatever is necessary to get in the right environments to be around people that can fire you up and turn you up and turn you on. Real talk. That is not a, that is not a negotiable. Like, I couldn't just sit in here all day and be, no, I needed to go see John C. Maxwell too. I needed to be in that environment too. I listened to audiobooks every single morning. Every single morning, I learn something new. I go to workshops and I go to conferences and I go to see people that are smarter than me, that are more excited than me. Man, as a matter of fact, tomorrow, I'm glad I just thought about it. I got a meeting with somebody uh, at 11 o'clock, a big old boss. I don't even know what it's for. He just said, hey, listen, what you, you in town? Yes. Okay, good. Let's meet up Tuesday at 11. Boom, boom. Let's do it. Damn right. I'm leaving my workout. I'm going straight to my meeting. Sweaty and all. Big old boss. I don't even know what he want. I don't even care what he want. I'm glad that he called me. We got to get in new environments. And so I just want to encourage you all. Let this week be the week. Stop playing small. Stop playing small. Stop staying around your same little friends. Stop being the hottest one in the room. That's tired. That ain't doing nothing for you. You the hottest one in the room. And you making 100000 a year. I don't want to be in that room. Put me in a room where I'm the slowest, lowest person in the room. Get around people that activate you, turn you up, turn you on. That once you leave their presence, you just feel like, ah, <laughs> you understand? Get around those kind of people. You understand? Get around those kind of people that just, ah, activate you. You understand? They're out here. Stop being around your, your low vibration, complaining, whining friends. That every time they call you, they got a problem. You know, I, you, you got to get sick of it at one point in your life. All right? And so listen, if you have not yet secured your ticket for the awakening, y'all should be there. Go get your ticket. We got a buy now, pay later option. We have less than 15 seats left. I'm letting you know right now, um, once we sell out them 15 straight up, I want to sell more. So if you come and you end up being in the back of the back, be grateful because there's something back there for you. But just know I want to sell another 100 seats. I want it to be so packed. They be like, we couldn't hardly, you know, move around exactly. Thank you, but get in there. So go right now to stormyawakening.com. Very high level, high level businessmen and women are going to be in the room, your network, the people that you want to meet, the people that's going to activate you, the people that's going to give you that energy, the people that's going to teach you stuff, the people that's going to help you to get to the next level in your mindset, mind, body, spirit, finances, relationships. Stop denying yourself of needing a new environment. You need a new environment. Some of y'all ain't people watching years. Come and watch some people. Come and see people. Come and talk to people. Come and touch some people. Hello, get outside. Happy birthday, Rockstar Diva. So go right now to stormyawakening.com. Get your seat. What's up, Pastor Anthony Murray? Get your seat. Get in the right environment. It's happening in, in Miami. Listen, the hotel is off the water. The whole experience, you're going to be able to look out to the right and see nothing but water. You're talking about manifesting on the water. You're talking about learning on the water. Your, your, your mindset is going to be at a different level because you're going to be wanting to grow. Because you're going to be saying to yourself, I need to be able to do this all the time. You're going you're gonna to want to bring your family to those type of environments all the time. And guess what? You have to wake up internally to be able to have the money, the time, and the energy to be able to put yourself in the right environments. I'm sorry, y'all. You can't keep doing the same thing every day and I think it's not affecting your happiness and your joy and your monies. You can't keep saying, I only have enough money for the car, no, and the light bill and the water bill. No, that's the problem. You need a new energy. You need somebody to just inoculate you real quick and give a give you a conscious interruption so that you can realize that there's more to life than paying the light bill, water bill, phone bill, and being later with this man. So listen, I love you guys. Make it a great day. Let's go ahead and speak our affirmations together. Let's go, y'all. I will hear the voice of the Holy Spirit within. I will lead and I follow. I will create and not destroy. I am a force for good. I defy the odds. I set new standards. Come on, y'all. I am a leader. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. Come on, y'all. I am the lender and not the borrower. I am loved by God. I am chosen by God. I am protected by God. No weapon formed against Stormy Nicole Wellington shall be able to prosper. No weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. Somebody need to say, no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me in judgment shall be condemned. It's my season. It's my turn. I'm healthy, I'm happy, I'm humble, I'm wealthy, I'm strong. Today is 
my day. Come on, y'all say, today is my day. And I will never be broke another day in my life. And I will live the fullness of life and all God has for me. Y'all make it a great day. Peace and blessings. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in a couple weeks at the awakening. And of course, y'all know I'm working out today. So when I go live again, which is going to probably be in the next 10 minutes, maybe, I don't know, I think I got a live or something to do at 1130. So I probably ain't got no time, but I'll probably still get it in for 30 minutes anyway. So yes, I will. I will see y'all when I go live to work out. So my workout crew, let's get it. All right. Bye, everybody.